Good evening, Excellency, Honorable Speakers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Uh, a warm welcome to uh, ACID's special webinar. My name is Juan Tepi, a junior researcher at Uncle Social Innovation Park, and it is a great honor to be uh, the moderator for tonight's uh, special webinar. Uh, but before I move to our main agenda today, I would like to briefly introduce uh, ACID, which is Uncle Social Innovation Park. Uncle Social Innovation Park is a nonprofit entity affiliated with ASEAN Vision Institute that aims to develop knowledge on on social innovation and provide sustainable and innovative solution to local Cambodia enterprises. Uh, today's webinar brings up to you uh, the topic of Cambodia Economics Outlook 2023, which aims to look at Cambodia uh, economy's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the challenges that Cambodia is facing and how exactly Cambodia can shield its economy from a possible economic recession in months to come. Before uh, we start our program, uh, please uh, allow me to warmly welcome our honorable speakers waiting on the screen to share their remarkable comments on today's topic. First, I would like to introduce um, Dr. Bernadette Thiel. Uh, Dr. Bernadette is a public policy analyst and government relations strategist. He was honored Young Global uh, Leader by the World Economics Forum in uh, 2013. And currently he is serving as the president at ASEAN Vision Institute and chairman of UNGO Social Innovation Park. Uh, Dr. Suthi Ong, Executive Director of Center for Strategy and Innovation uh, Policy, and also a lecturer at National University of Management, uh, also known as NOM University. He is a senior national economics consultant for the UNDP, uh, Cambodia, and consultant uh, to the ASEAN Development Bank, Manila. And as for Mr. Vitya Tan, he is a senior technical advisor at the German Agency for International Cooperation. Uh, through his role at the organization, uh, he advises central and provincial, pro provincial governments on economic development programs, focusing on uh, private sector promotion. He also worked uh, work closely with other actors in the ecosystem to support the growth of local enterprises sustainably and competitively. So I would like to in, uh, open the floor for discussion now, but first I would like to invite uh, Dr. Vanada Tiang to uh, deliver his opening remark. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Tepi Tuan. Uh, on behalf of the Hong Kong Social Innovation Park, ASIP, uh, we would like to express our uh, deepest gratitude to our two distinguished panelists, uh, Dr. Sati Ong and Mr. Uh, Tan Vichir for uh, your, your time and your support uh, to this program. And we are looking forward to uh, your perspectives and on the global regional economy as well as the Cambodian uh, economic outlook for 2023. As we all know, uh, we are not off the woods yet when it uh, comes to the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the implications uh, of the war in Ukraine on food and security shortages and and of course the inflation spikes in various parts of the world. Uh, so the world economy is somehow is on the brink of a global recession. And uh, some countries are already in recession, some countries already near recessions, and some countries have very low growth. And Cambodia is uh, in the, the brightest and spot in the world when it comes to economic development this year. So how can we uh, uh, grow uh, within the context of regional dynamics, uh, as well as in the context of uh, a global economic recession. So I think this is important for our audience to understand uh, better the global regional uh, economic outlook and, and Cambodia uh, grow this year. It, it, it will be a challenging year for the world and also for Cambodia, but I think uh, by working together and sharing this kind of knowledge, uh, analysis, perhaps we can uh, be more resilient and we can uh, maintain our high growth, uh, the dynamism of economic growth. So, um, also uh, looking forward to the question and comments from the audience here. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Lanaret, for your opening remark. Uh, before narrowing down the discussion of the economy of Cambodia uh, economic outlook in 2023, I would like to ask for your thoughts on the bigger picture uh, on the global and regional uh, economic outlook as the world is recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic and adapting to a new normal. Uh, may I have uh, Dr. Suthia opinions on this, please? Okay, you are on mute. All right, okay. Very good uh, afternoon. Uh, let me first uh, start by uh, expressing my thank to uh, Uncle Social Innovation Park for uh, the opportunity to share my perspective on this uh, discussion on this important topic. Um, uh, uh, to the question on uh, World Economic Outlook as uh, Dr. Wanneret has mentioned uh, some of the, uh, there's a pretty dire uh, projection by uh, the global uh, institution like the IMF, um, they uh, uh, adjust their projection downwards uh, with respect to the world economic growth prospect for uh, 2023. Uh, the previous uh, projection is around uh, 3.6 now, the figure is down to uh, 2.7. Um, uh, there's a, a lot of uh, uncertainties um, uh, surrounding uh, the continuation, uh, the spillover effect from the pandemic, uh, as well as uh, what is happening right now, especially the ongoing war in, uh, in Ukraine and geopolitical tensions and emerging issue uh, such as uh, you know um, fragmentation of or disruption of supply chains, so pretty dire. And we also have to look into the the other major economy, especially uh, the U.S. Um, so the latest projection is uh, previously the, the it's expected to grow by more than two percent in 2023, but now it uh, the, it 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 is expected to grow uh, less than one percent. Um, and as with China is also, you know, for the first time that um, the projection of growth for 2023 is going to be around 4.4%, down from uh, more than 5%. And it is very, very first time that the Chinese economy grow is below uh, the ASEAN, uh, uh, especially ASEAN 5 average, which is uh, predicted to be uh, um, um, uh, for the ASEAN five is almost 5% to for 2023. So it's pretty dim. Um, we have to watch and, oh, I have to mention EU as well. The projection is, you know, because of direct impact, uh, what is going on in, in, in Europe, especially the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine. Now the, uh, the economic growth for the EU uh, zone is, uh, pretty, uh, pretty bad. So it, it uh, obviously, if it's going to uh, get into recession because the, the projection growth is less than one percent, down from uh, uh, two point three percent earlier projection for two thousand twenty three. So pretty dire. So we have to watch this economy very carefully because Cambodia is um, as an open uh, economy. Is uh, what happened uh, to the outside world it would affect us, but we can get back to uh, Cambodian economy uh, later on. Uh, I think that that from me, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sothir, uh, for this insightful information. Um, what about Dr. Vanaret Chiang and uh, Mr. Ritia Tan? Do you have any comments on this? Uh, I just would like to add uh, on the, the Asia Pacific region uh, as a whole, um, uh, the COVID-19, of course, has hit hard uh, the economy in the regions. Uh, but thanks to uh, our reforms at the local national level and the dynamism of economic integration at the regional level, because early this year, we started implementing the regional uh, comprehensive economic partnership. So it, it can 
how to say, boost uh, the regional trade investment flows and the dynamism of uh, technological innovations and, and so on. And uh, some country also invest in infrastructure and human resources and digital economy over the past uh, two, two years. So that uh, bears some fruit for the whole regions. So uh, Southeast Asia plus three, plus China, uh, Korea, Japan, uh, perhaps is, uh, have the, uh, the kind of the high, kind of highest growth region in the world this year, according to various forecasts. Um, uh, but obviously, um, uh, China economy is, is a bit slow. Uh, so uh, we wait to see the pickup in China because uh, the opening up just took place uh, recently, uh, less than a month. Right? So Jan January 8th. Uh, so it, it may take some months, maybe a few more months to to see this kind of the impact of the opening up and and then the uh, restoration of the the pre COVID tourism travel industry and of course the, the the Chinese business travel travelers to the region and to resume their let's say construction's investment real uh, estate or those kind of investment projects so so that is something that we, we need to see the the dynamics in China first uh, how many more months the economic there uh, we will gain a uh, certain momentum after the opening up. Uh, looking to ASEAN, uh, again, it's uh, uh, about 5% or so estimated. So, so that is uh, kind of a very positive development. So um, uh, we will talk about Cambodia later, but uh, uh, the, the Southeast Asia and the Asia, Asian plus three region, uh, quite, quite positive uh, in terms of economic recovery. If I, I may add um, a, a little bit of, um, according to this forecast by all the leading institution, it seemed like a very cloudy day ahead, but uh, I agree with Dr. Van Eret that um, quarter one will be um, a decisive quarter on how all of this will unfold because the reopening of China, as well as the uh, shifting from the winter season into uh, spring season in, in most of the advanced economy might be show how uh, the energy energy crisis will settle down uh, for this year so uh, all of this i think we'll have we will have to wait and to really judge how much um, of a contraction or some uh, predict uh, recession will really happen but in general, um, as mentioned, uh, the Asia Pacific, uh, as well as uh, especially the Southeast Asia economy, is uh, seem to be really strong according to the latest predictions. Thank you. Uh, thank you all honorable speakers for this uh, insightful discussion. Um, after understanding the view of uh, regional and global economy, we shall uh, take a look at uh, Cambodia's economy as this is our main topics for uh, today. So um, there are also various estimates that Cambodia would achieve about 6% uh, GDP growth this year. Um, as tourism and other in industries bounce back after the pandemic. Uh, so may I have your thoughts on this matter and uh, in your perspective, what are the key drivers to this growth? Um, uh, may I have uh, Dr. Vanadet opinions on this? Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. So uh, according to the forecast of the Cambodian government, so the, the growth rate this year is about 6.6%. Uh, we look at the sector, uh, sector, um, uh, the manufacturing industry sector, uh, we grow about 9.2%, and services sector, we grow about 6.6%, agriculture, we grow about 1.1%. Uh, so, uh, so those are the, uh, the forecasts of, of the Cambodian economy. Uh, looking at the, the drivers, I, I, I think that the drivers here, uh, perhaps related to, to uh, this uh, investment in uh, social protection and human resources and, and uh, also certain infrastructure during the, especially digital infrastructure, digital economy during the pandemic. So, so that 
that have um, uh, Cambodia to to recover uh, in in this kind of a digital economy, uh, human uh, resources, a uh, kind of skill labor and uh, skill labor driven uh, uh, industry. Because I look at the export component of export, uh, the non textile export is has increased quite quite remarkably. Uh, so so that is a healthy a kind of a trajectory looking at the. Uh, the export of the non-textile products, so the manufacturing sector, uh, quite quite dynamic. So, an uh, agriculture sector, it, it's slow, but uh, it, it it is stable in a way. <laughs> but of course, tourism sector uh, is expected to grow, uh, perhaps after May or June, because now I think it's still early. Um, but I think from May June, maybe we can see the pickup in the tourism travel industry. Uh, the Cambodian policy is quite, quite uh, effective in terms of social protection and social safety net uh, when it comes to during the, the fight against the COVID-19. So that's why we have a, a certain kind of cushion against the, to, to mitigate the risk. Uh, without those kind of investment in social protection, uh, social safety net will have, I think we, we are in a very, very bad situation now. Will have the growth may be very very low or almost at the recessions. So so those are the investment that we did uh, during the COVID in the past two years that resulted in this kind of healthy growth uh, this year. Um, and uh, of course the um, the concern sector here is a real uh, kind of a, a real estate and construction which which is about ten percent of the GDP. So this is a very uh, the red line. Uh, uh, kind of uh, sector construction and real estate. So we don't know when it will boom up, but it very much depends on Chinese <laughs> investors. So this is a problem of uh, our economy. We are so much relies on China. So we, that's why we need to diversify more uh, in order to mitigate this. Uh, so I, I end here. Thank you. Okay. Um, if I just may add, so. Uh, I agree with what uh, everything Dr. Bernard had mentioned. Um, I think credit has to be given to the government. Um, most importantly is uh, the uh, vaccine rollout and we managed to um, make sure that every uh, everyone get vaccination. That's the basic for the open up of the economy to ensure that uh, there won't be any uh, you know um, prolonged lockdown that would have uh, knockdown effect on the production and others um, activity of the economy. It, it can be um, um, uh, retail and, and, and basic uh, basic uh, 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 daily life activity of the people. So yeah, the, the driver for the grow AV, uh, we did, we, uh, the government export is unexpectedly uh, rebound very quickly. So, uh, so the, uh, the, uh, the recovery is it's kind of reshaped for us and um, uh, if the projection is correct uh, for uh, from uh, last year grow 5.2 percent um, uh, to uh, uh, six or more uh, more than six but the latest ministry of economy and finance at the uh, uh, public for budget public forum so the government also uh, kind of downward adjust the growth rate at uh, uh, 5.6 percent for 2023 but uh, given that uh, growth rate it is still very significant for the country uh, uh, based on quite a uh, good performance um, of the government export and especially the, and also the non government export so one interesting feature is the refiguration of you know uh, our garment industry uh, uh, continue production without a lockdown and then we can quickly uh, cater into this important uh, vaccine related uh, uh, products, uh, mask, uh, cloth and, 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 and things like that. So it's, it, it's quite interesting that we need to, to do that. So the, the most important thing is to make sure that um, the daily activity of the people uh, with, uh, with the COVID vaccines uh, roll out and a proper measure for for uh, to prevent a, a, a prolonged lockdown. That's a, the key for this recovery. Um, and of course, uh, moving forward, we have to 
to be careful what uh, what happening uh, in the world and because um, um, we're not going to expect one the global economy slow down and external demand external demand would would likewise uh, damper so we would expect that uh, the export of those uh, traditional strong driver of Cambodian economy, uh, in particular, government would, would not be sustained. And of course, uh, our, the concern is uh, uh, on the uh, construction in real estate. It uh, significantly slowed down. It, uh, according to the latest data, is the growth is pretty much very flat. So it's going to be less than percent growth for both uh, construction and real estate. Uh, the good thing. Even though uh, this slowdown in construction in real estate, um, as uh, Dr. Warren mentioned, we are quite lucky for some reason that um, the domestic exposure for this investment from China for um, this uh, you know, oversupply of all this uh, condominium apartments, um, not uh, primarily uh, funded by domestic uh, uh, link to the financial institution, as well as um, the mortgage uh, from the buyer. So mostly we, we quite shield from that. So quite lucky, and, but we not quite sure how significant the exposure we, we have uh, to the rest of the domestic economy, but the slowdown would have a very significant impact for the prospect of growth for uh, 2023. Yep. I, I was also, uh, the, the forecast that came out was also beyond my expectation, but not uh, surprising because uh, given the, as you mentioned, the, the, the uh, social safety net and all other investment that the government have done over the past two years during the pan pandemic definitely pay off. Um, but I, I think Cambodia is among the only uh, few uh, countries in this region that can afford to have a to to um, because if you follow the, the latest national budget we are the only few nations that can afford um, uh, to the increase of national budget and this i believe certainly um, contribute to the continuation of the economic growth and um, this low the low inflation rate i think provide uh, um, a lot of ground for the continuation of domestic consumption as well and that definitely account for um, some of those uh, uh, 6.2 percent growth too and but I, I, I totally agree with Dr. Satir that um, uh, despite of this um, we, 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 there, there is too early, still too early to say that uh, how long can this growth sustain and if it's not at all going to affect our economic uh, economy uh, in this uh, year to come. I, I just would like to add uh, when it comes to the SME, small and medium enterprises. Uh, so, so this is uh, also the backbone of the economy uh, by supporting them in terms of capacity building uh, and uh, certain financial support, uh, credit, for instance, access to credit, that, that also is very instrumental because I think in, in everywhere, a small medium enterprises play a critical role in a social economic development. So I think uh, if we uh, increase the momentum from this year, from this month onward, because we still have another 11 months down the road, uh, invest more resources to support SMEs, especially in capacity building access to credit and also market uh, access and this kind of digital transformation and innovation. I think perhaps uh, we can maintain this high forecast or economic growth because uh, we, we need to rely on ourselves in terms of productivity and competitiveness because our economy is so much dependent on export to external markets. Uh, the, EU, uh, US, now also maybe China growing in terms of agricultural products. So we need to create a certain of domestic consumption power. Uh, so uh, I think China, uh, the dual circulation of China quite interesting uh, to, to learn and 
what are the aspects of that dual circulation strategy of China that we can apply? Dual circulation, I mean the international circulation and domestic circulations. And these two need to be interconnected. So when there's a problem with the external circulation economy, we have a domestic circulation to help support so that the, the, the whole economy will not collapse. So this is something that I think we, we need to invest more in terms of uh, productivity, competitiveness, also domestic consumption, so that we can have this kind of domestic circulation, very resilient. Uh, so we, we, anyway, we still have uh, 11, 11 more months to go. I, I, I can comment a bit on, the, um, yes, uh, it's, it's important that we um, we should uh, focus more on our resilient, domestic resilience, especially um, uh, for the domestic consumption uh, and, and domestic production catering for, for ourselves. This is a very important uh, aspect um, that, that we need to um, uh, strengthen and maximize. As you may understand that, um, uh, I will, I will, we, we promote, uh, we, I mean, our, our people are kind of um, enjoys the, uh, the, 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 the dividend from the economic growth. Um, we have to be careful too, what we consume. You know, some of the consumption uh, pattern is not so productive uh, in my opinion. Um, and it's it also, you know, the, you know, luxury is put it too much on something is not productive, right? We have more Rolls Royce and all this, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of spirit consumption on some luxury is unnecessary, and not unnecessary. So, of course, the those who can afford to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. But we, we as a society, we have to be careful on what uh, we consume and we should be more nationalist in a sense, uh, value our uh, domestic products because at the early stage, if we don't pay the premiums, um, given uh, some you know difficulty uh, from uh, from the war that we need to uh, build better infrastructures, uh, 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 develop our human resource and skill, naturally our production cost would be very high, but uh, and if we are uh, have to compete at a good, a pretty uh, difficult. So in a sense, uh, we have to look, reflect in ourselves, uh, be a little bit nationalist and pay a little bit premium to our domestically pre uh, produced goods and services. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, honorable speakers for your detailed um, information on this Cambodia economy. And uh, if I'm not wrong, um, I I think what you have mentioned is that the key drivers to the economic growth uh, up to 6% is that Cambodia um, will be able to uh, develop on the social infrastructure, agriculture, um, and uh, the te technology development. And also that um, non-textile export also played a huge role in the growth of Cambodia's economy. But there still might be risk because we cannot be sure uh, what is going to happen in the future because we can't forecast that. And um, uh, I, I also find it interesting when uh, Dr. Wanderer mentioned about the competitiveness in Cambodia um, as the, um, I think during the ASEAN chairmanship, uh, Cambodia has the opportunity to uh, showcase its uh, potential in the international stage and uh, competitiveness is uh, pretty important uh, for Cambodia to um, uh, show the world that uh, we have the potential to grow. Um, so um, we might be aware that when firms have to compete for customers, uh, it leads to lower prices, higher quality goods and services, a uh, greater variety and more innovation which is, uh, again, essential for Cambodia. And I think our audience would be uh, intrigued to understand how um, exactly Cambodia uh, can be uh, competitive uh, economically and what are the key challenges and obstacles that we need uh, to address. Um, can I uh, please have Mr. Vichy's perspective on this question, please? 
Thank you very much. Um, in overall, competitiveness is defined by a couple of factors. Uh, four to be specific, including the government, meaning rule of law, as well as the policy, how effective they are. Um, the economy themselves, meaning in terms of resource, how you manage those resources effectively or not. Uh, the business internal factor, if you are um, or you have the, the entrepreneur have all those necessary skills to manage and run a productive and efficient business. And lastly, in terms of infrastructure. Um, in, my, in my opinion, Cambodia lack uh, many of those factors. And if, to, if we are to start with, um, I would start with the labor market. Um, I, I think Cambodia have a strong labor market, but certainly we are not competitive in that. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I was talking to one of our partners uh, and uh, she's running an HR and recruitment agency and she have around more than 5,000 uh, workers in her portfolios. And what she was complaining was that um, the worker does not have the, the mindset or the motivation to to be there, to be as productive and competitive in, in comparison to the uh, labor in the neighboring countries. And that usually causes a lot of trouble when she's negotiating with uh, the employers. And, um, and I think that also poses a lot of issue when we try to build a competitive uh, industry in, in the country. Um, if we talk, we talk about, if we talk at a macro level, uh, certainly Cambodia, has, Cambodia's economy has been uh, concentrating on uh, in uh, a several, only a few um, industry, um, Dr. Bernadette has mentioned already, agriculture, um, government and textile uh, constructions that, uh, that is now coming to a, uh, 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 a, a, a changing uh, direction. Um, the and then lastly the tourism sector, and we need we need to diversify that more. And I think um, the government see that as the uh, something that has to be done with the new policy. Um, I think the other day the the council for the development of Cambodia has issued a new roadmap for the. Uh, that that targeting uh, the automotive and uh, um, and electronic industry. So this is an attempt to 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 diversify the economy from those uh, four uh, previous sectors. Uh, but in addition to this diversification approach, I think they uh, there is a need to also look into some niche market that. Uh, that uh, that we have the comparative advantage also. And um, we have discussed the other day and we feel that Cambodia is, uh, has, still has um, a, 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 a good foundation for some green economy, um, producing some, uh, uh, producing, in focusing on the automotive sector, producing for the uh, electric vehicle, something like that would be ideal. And if we're going to uh, start uh, into that industry, then start something that is uh, for, um, uh, future proof. That's uh, in my opinion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Viti, on this, uh, your, your perspective. Um, so I would like to um, ask if um, Dr. Wanderet and Dr. Sukti have any comments on this as well. Yeah, I, I agree that the uh, competitiveness of Cambodia uh, uh, depends on these many factors. Um, it, uh, it, 
uh, uh, we have to utilize our resource effectively and and especially um, uh, in the areas uh, in agriculture obviously we have that potential but we have not managed to um, maximize our um, uh, pro pro uh, kind of competitiveness in, 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 in agriculture of course we are Latecomer compared to the most uh, advanced in the Greek cultures, especially um, uh, Thailand and Vietnam. We have to learn from uh, what they're doing, why their production process is lower than us. Of course, uh, it comes down to a lot of factors, uh, one of which is infrastructure, and, uh, and another one is, of course, uh, apply uh, modern techniques and the skill of the workforce. Uh, and we, it's encouraging that now we are, um, we are using a lot of uh, um, we apply mechanization in agriculture, and we can observe a lot of uh, leapfrog in the productivity in agriculture, but nonetheless, it's a long way to compete with uh, our neighboring country. Uh, specifically on the uh, competitiveness, uh, the key is uh, productivity. So productivity come from uh, either from labor or it, it either come from uh, effective utilization of capital, that means using, uh, uh, applying new modern technology, machinery and equipment so that we can double uh, our production at the same uh, or, or at a lower cost. So that how is um, competitive would come from. And, but I would also agree that uh, skill uh, is the most important thing. Uh, it comes down to our human resource we are blessed uh, as a country uh, with uh, so-called demographic dividend that we have a large pool of, uh, of uh, our youth, a young population that, that should be a very productive, should be uh, active participate in the economy. So with, uh, with the equip with the uh, skills and, and right attitude, uh, I think is going to be uh, very important. So, I talk to a lot of uh, people in, in the labor markets and they complain a lot of, uh, of uh, um, skill is a necessity, but the attitude discipline is another, another work that we have to build. And this uh, discipline, uh, morality, attitude, hard working, actually is uh, in our, in our uh, in our uh, gene uh, as a nation that built a, a, a civilization in the past. So we should uh, look back and identify ourselves as a nation, uh, as an identity, as a, as a person, as a Cambodian. Uh, we should uh, be known uh, uh, as a glorified past and then we have to restore that. As a discipline, hard working, and we have to work as uh, hard as the Vietnamese or the Chinese, that how they become rich, nothing, no shortcut, uh, no quick reach, but only uh, acquire through hard work, uh, perseverance, uh, and, and things like that. So that's another comment I want to make. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I just would like to add when it comes to working attitude and discipline. So this is a uh, another angle that we need to stress when we develop human resources in Cambodia or human capital development. It's not only technical skill or hard skill, but this kind of attitude and discipline. And we can learn from Japanese I mean, context when it comes to this kind of work attitude and discipline. And it takes time actually uh, to, to implant this uh, work culture and attitude takes time. But uh, I'm optimistic that because we have a, a history of great civilization. Uh, so we need to connect to the past, who we are, our identity, and build the future based on the past. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I hope uh, this was a uh, fruitful and interesting discussion. Uh, now I would like to open the floor for a question from the audience. Uh, both in our Zoom and live chat. So if you do have any question at all, please do not hesitate to drop it in the chat box. So, so while, while we are waiting for, for the questions, uh, perhaps uh, we hear, I uh, would like to hear perhaps perspective on, on these innovations. Um, currently, uh, 
uh, Coastal Zone Innovation Park together with uh, TIZ, Germany, Khmer Enterprises, and the uh, Ministry of uh, Industry Technology Innovation coming up with a project to build innovation capacity uh, for small and medium enterprises in uh, several provinces in Siem Reap and others. Um, so perhaps here, Dr. Sutia uh, have done a lot on, on SMEs <laughs> for the past 10 years. So maybe you can help us uh, uh, when it comes to innovation, what should we, uh, we do more uh, in, order, in order to improve the innovation capacity of SME in Cambodia? Yeah, um, thank you, Dr. Manrad. Yes, I almost forgot what I've been working a lot on SME, especially on uh, uh, innovation is one of uh, the key uh, research that we've done in the past. So innovation, it, it has many stages, right? So it's very simple uh, process innovation or production innovation. All, uh, and and, and uh, within each, there's a lot of room for improvement. Process innovation is uh, as simple as, uh, for example, applying the Kaizen Japanese way of uh, do using the same resources, but change the way um, a production process is organized, then we can uh, increase the productivity. Uh, product innovation is very diff uh, much more difficult because it requires uh, te technical uh, technology uh, uh, capability of the firms, whether it do, uh, uh, internally it's um, uh, uh, invented or improved or it, it adopted from from elsewhere. So um, it, it it's uh, come down to working closely, um, and uh, I I I think the 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 most important part of, of uh, uh, improve or uh, having an innovative SME is we have we need experts in in the areas uh, that are well versed with the production techniques. If we don't have that, we can, uh, in my opinion, if we we lack people who have a, a good knowledge on you know industrial specific knowledge because if we, we don't have we never seen the uh, way of uh, organizing production of products. It, it would take a long time that uh, the, the, uh, the firm owners uh, would be able to uh, uh, either introduce or, or uh, doing something by, by themselves. So we need somebody that, um, that have that capacity. Uh, if we don't have domestically as a Cambodian or uh, hopefully, uh, because we have a lot of migrant worker uh, in uh, in Japan or in Korea, when when they come back, they can be an expert because we they they are themselves seen what the production technology has been in the Greek culture in food processing, and now they can import those or they can in, in, uh, impart of those knowledge, and either they want they come by themselves in their own business or they can work for uh, existing SME. Uh, so that they can improve uh, uh, the productivity of them. If we don't have that, I, I, I think we can uh, ra uh, be in, in a uh, typical technical assistant request to our good, uh, good, uh, good friends from Japan or Korea. Maybe we can just ask for those uh, retired engineer or uh, exchange between owners of SME in Japan and to come and uh, uh, and see what what they can help. If they can match up with our SME, that's great. So that's a that's a lot of way of this uh, diffusion, right? Diffusion of um, of uh, this uh, innovation into the production process. But core to the future of the country, of course, we have to have our own technology. We have to have cap capability of uh, doing research in a new field. Um, uh, some potential emerging technology that uh, that the world would need. So at least we have to know what are they. Uh, we have to prepare our uh, 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 human resource, especially in the university. We have to have teachers that know all those technology so that they can they can teach and and spread those to uh, to our young generation of of learners. So. Yeah, I, I, I said there's a lot of talk, but I'm, I'm just, you know, pop up whatever that's uh, come to my mind. I, I hope that it would be useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, uh, thank you. So uh, we got several questions from our audience, but due to a uh, time constraint, I would like to ask uh, one question uh, to um, Mr. Vitia, uh, which is uh, what is uh, your perspective uh, from youth to be uh, part of Cambodia economic uh, development? Um, thank you for the question. I think I think um, I have mentioned before that if to build Cambodia um, to become a competitive economy, we start with our um, labor, our human resource, and as a youth um, that is entering the industry and also the future leader, um, I think it is important um, as our uh, two other guest speaker mentioned to build the attitude and the skill that is required for us to lead in that uh, specific uh, industry. And um, in, in, in this um, um, nowadays a very uh, connected world, I think it, it is um, quite uh, convenient for youth to reach to 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 access all the all the resource that can help them build such skill. But uh, the 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 attitude is is something that is rather um, difficult to build the mindset, and um, that uh, require um, times and practice uh, to 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 in order to. To transform one, transform oneself into a productive and efficient labor force, and also leader for 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 the industry and after all for the, the Cambodian economy. So, I would recommend that we start with those uh, two, and then I'm sure the impact that you will have on on the the, the, the um, overall level would be significant. Thank you, uh, Mr. Viti. Um, due to uh, time constraint, uh, we have come to an end of this uh, webinar. Uh, we hope the audience find this uh, discussion informative and useful. And we also would like to express our uh, appreciate, appreciation to our uh, guest speakers for taking their time um, showcasing and sharing their expertise. Uh, but before we close our program, we have uh, we hope that before we close our program, may I invite all um, three uh, honorable speakers for a photo session. I will um, start counting from three. Uh, one, two, three. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again, once again, honorable speakers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, joining our uh, webinar today. Please um, stay updated on our uh, following program. Um, have a good remaining day of your day. Good night. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Good night. Yeah.